What's up, everybody? Welcome to the Last Days of War cast. We are Southern California-based band, The Last Days of War. I am Mark. I'm Rob. And I'm Danny. And today we have a very special guest, 96.7's own Mike Z. Woo! Yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for having me. How's it going? How you doing, buddy? Good, good. Drinks are flowing. Pizza's flowing. That's yeah. what's up. Yeah. So uh, we have a little tradition here for what's first on the agenda, uh, Rob. <laughs> Shots. We're doing shots. All right. Yeah. All right. Shots. I said Who's Josh. Josh isn't here today, guys. I got my Can own shot glass. Right. My last days of war shot glass. Nice. Yeah. Available in the link in the bio. There you go. Plug, plug, plug. No plug, plug. Yeah. So uh, while he's getting these shots ready, Mike, uh, we'll just kind of kick it off with what's like, uh, you know what? Go ahead, Rob. We, we said we were going to do this round table. You start over here. Hit, hit him with the first question, bro. Okay. So what's the day-to-day life like for Mike Z? Day to day life, huh? Like, like how, how do you start work. out your day? Yeah. Like, what what's the wake up? Have some coffees, open up the blabbermouth headlines, you know, read through there, see what's going on for the day, follow up on any emails, and then you know, getting ready for the next show, next interview. It's a big. <laughs> I showed it to my wife once, and she was laughing at me. It's like a sheet of paper I do every week of everything I got to get get done for that week what's coming up next week what shows i'm going to what shows are coming up next week and it looks like a jigsaw puzzle man then I'm, <laughs> I'm probably the only person that can uh, read it and understand it but it, it's how i get stuff done but yeah there's a whole crazy schedule to get get it done oh oh man that so sounds- you kind of got to really like study up on everything that's coming up and yeah and i'm always working in advance because we got to do that more often <laughs> studying studying <up. laughs> that sounds like a good thing to do yeah <laughs> yeah man uh that's yeah, that's that's kind of cool, dude. Like, like, can it get chaotic at times, like where you feel like you don't know what day it is, type deal stuff? You know what I mean? Like, it was chaotic when I lost my hard drive at the same time as going on vacation. Oh, that's earlier cool. this year. Oh wow. Ooh, yeah. So that wasn't a fun time. Like getting on a plane, can't do anything, and when I come back, I'll figure it out. Yeah. Right. And and I had to kind of retrace the steps and kind of get some of my stuff back, but end up losing a lot. But that was that was a horrible time. That was when it all went wrong. But yeah. figured it out, got it done, and, you know, made it happen. A lot of late nights, but whatever it takes. Jeez. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have a question for you, and that is, what what got you into radio? What made you want to be... Shots? Shots. What made you want to take, what made <laughs> you like, want to take this shot? You know what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Cheers. 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 To Mike Z. Bro, you filled those to the rim, bro. Jameson. Jameson. At least it's nice and smooth. So, yeah, my dude, qu- so I was lucky that, uh, or unlucky, but uh, I was just telling this story recently. My high school had a radio station. Okay. So that's really kind of what started it. And uh, it wasn't like a real radio station. It was just kind of like speakers that were aimed at like the lunch area where everyone kind of hung out during lunch. And then you could work your way into having like 12 to 1. And then every day was a different day. You know, Susie would do this day and she'd play her music. And then, so I kind of wanted to be like, well, I'm going to play some heavy metal one day. Like, nice. I'm going to work my way into yeah, one day. I was going to say, what is, what is young Mike Z? What yeah, is he, I was playing was he the blasting? same stuff I'm playing now on the radio. <laughs> nice. But yeah, that was my intent was like, well, let me get this other music exposed. And that's kind of really what started it. Nice. nice. And so so what what was the transition from the school radio to I want to do this as a profession? Uh, well, after high school, I went to Cal Poly Pomona and, and, uh, started doing communication and stuff. But at the same time I was in a fraternity and, uh, they wanted to have a party and there was a new radio station at the time 
a million years ago, it was an alternative rock station in LA and, and they would do like all kind of wacky events and they'd go everywhere. And, and it wasn't like they would just go to these big concerts. They'd go to like a fraternity party and something weird like that. So we invited him out to one. And then I, at the end of the night, cause I set it up, I was like, Hey, you guys hiring? Oh, yes, we are. And then got in on the street team and passing out bumper stickers and stuff and going to events and then kind of worked my way from there. Oh, that's cool. Yeah. yeah. Awesome, man. What you got, Danny? Ask him something. Uh, let me know, uh, let me ask you, what's the, uh, first band you ever remember interviewing and what was that like for you? Were you, were you like nervous, shy? Oh, for sure. Terrible. I mean, <clears throat> I, I still get nervous and, and shy all the time. I'm trying to think of yeah. like the first one, one that went really terrible that stands out in my brain. Uh, and it might've been one of the first ones was, uh, the band Nile. Okay. okay. And it was me and... Carl Sanders, Kyle, Carl Sanders, some, Carl Sanders, I think, or something like that. And I'm, and you call him Colonel? <laughs> <laughs> I walked in and, and I was just on his tour bus, me and him alone on the tour bus, holding the microphone, shaking the whole time. Like, Intimidating as all hell. <laughs> had three questions written out that went through in 45 seconds. Oh, and you're like, just like, oh no. <laughs> yes. Yeah. yeah, it was like I a didn't... comic who ran out of material, like, uh. Ooh. Yeah. yeah, so that was pretty terrible. Right. And probably why I can't remember his name because I wasn't a fan after that because then he started <laughs> making fun of me, rightfully so, but it didn't turn me on to being a fan of his band. Uh, but yeah, that was pretty terrible to begin with. Yeah. That was an early one that, that stands out. I feel like you always got to have a few of those under your belt before you really start figuring out and getting your stride in things, you know? Just like playing an instrument oh, and being yeah. in a band, you know? Well, you, yeah. you mentioned uh, like getting nervous and stuff. I don't know if I've ever played a show, hit a stage, and I wasn't nervous. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't think I ever won't be, you know? I feel that if you don't have those nerves, you probably shouldn't be doing what you're doing. You oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like, you should always... I feel like if you be, don't, you're going to get yourself in trouble. Yeah, saying I shouldn't right? be doing weed? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, that gets rid of the nerves, bro. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> but no, that that sense of if you are getting nervousness... Nervous, you shouldn't be doing it's because you care. If you didn't it, care, you, you wouldn't be nervous. That's my point. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, Absolutely, definitely. yeah. Yeah. Uh, but on that note, like, is there any bands that you've wanted to interview, but you haven't interviewed yet? Oh, he's probably a bunch, right? Oh, I mean, Metallica. Metallica. Ah, yeah. He's rocking a Metallica shirt, guys. Yeah. 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 Nice. You have died to interview one of those guys. you never talked to any member of them? Or no. no. None of them. Mm -hmm. uh, Newstead was next to him, met him a couple of times, but that's about as close mm -hmm. as it got. Yeah. And uh, texted with Trujillo a little bit. I did get his number and we were talking about a couple of things, but nothing ever kind of came to fruition. But yeah, that'd be a big one. That'd be cool. Because I was like you guys, that was the thing too about me playing music on high school radio. I was in a band just like you guys. I played drums in a band and radio was just kind of an extension of that. Like, oh, these are the bands I'm listening to. This is the sound I like. Hmm. Let me try and do this somewhere else. What was, then, what was the name of your band? Yeah, I was going to say, what kind of music were you playing? <sighs> Metal, it, right? It, yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> it's funny because I, I just kind of uh, reconnected with my singer, but I haven't seen him in person yet. But we're like Facebook and we're like messaging back and forth. But I think the last band name, I think, was In Vain. Okay. He's all Metallico. Yeah. 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 That's that's crazy. So uh, uh, speaking of your interviews and stuff, what would be like one of your most memorable interviews that you've done? Mm. Memorable. This one. Yeah. <laughs> we're doing it right now. This, yeah. one. <laughs> this is the only memory I yeah. have. <laughs> like, but for, for whatever reason, why would why does that interview stand out to you? You know what I mean? Like Yeah, I'm trying to think of some good ones. I mean, more recently, like talking to Joey Belladonna of Anthrax. That's awesome. Over Zoom. Uh, due to all my interviews over Zoom, you probably find these guys on YouTube. I'm on there too. Mike Z967. But all my interviews on on uh, Zoom and uh, talking to Joey Belladonna of Anthrax while like he's just in his living room and you can see like his dining room and like a fake potted plant behind him and stuff. And I'm just like, oh, yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Like, I'm in Joey Belladonna's house right now. Yeah. And, like that, that was just cool. And we had a great conversation. But then there's other times too where you have great chats like uh, Jay Bentley, who's the bassist from uh, Bad, Bad Religion. Religion yeah. mm -hmm. I was terrified. I'm not a punk guy at all. I'm just a metal guy. And he doesn't come off like super uh, just open right away. And that that was, I've met him several times. I've worked for Bad Religion and uh, 
you kind of never knew what you were going to get. So like one day, <laughs> I, so I did monitors for them. One day, the wedge in front of him was still on stage at the end of the show. And sometimes it was down in the barricade. Mm. You know, I was just like, <laughs> you know. I must have caught him on a good day. Yeah, well, <laughs> Definitely. No, and he's a really cool guy. Really nice guy. Don't get me wrong. It's just there's a little bit of uh, that kind of like I do my thing this way and this and that. And if you step on that, I'm going to basically tell you. You know, really nice guy. <laughs> All the guys in that band are amazing. So, yeah. Yeah. But that was cool. Like, because I wasn't really a fan and I kind of felt like, do I even deserve to interview this guy? But we had a great chat and he laughed. He was laughing the whole time and cracking jokes on himself. And it was really fun, a really fun interview. Like, not expecting it. I was expecting the worst. Like, this guy's going to sniff me out in two seconds. Like, he's yeah. going to know I'm not a fan, but we just had a great chat. Yeah. Uh, what do you, what do you, what is your preparation for? interviewing people that you're not necessarily a fan of like you said like you're not like the biggest fan of them but you have an interview with them coming up do you just bury myself in the music like yeah. just non-stop especially if usually they're calling for a specific out you know they've just released an album and there's a tour so so there's something to plug there that you're talking right about. so yeah. i'll just kind of get lost in that album for like a good couple of days hopefully a week if i can if i know if it's planned out that far in advance sometimes i know hours days before but um, yeah, I just try to bury myself in that artist, obviously read the Wikipedia, obviously if I have any history with them, stalk their Instagram, um, <laughs> all that stuff matters. Like it, it and it helps. And, uh, you know, if you can, obviously you're going to have to talk about the music, you're going to have to talk about the tour, but if you can find something else to talk to them about that they're into, that's outside of that realm, then that's you're really, awesome. yeah. Then you're really getting somewhere. I think. Yeah. yeah. They, I'm sure they get the vibe of like, Oh, this guy did some research on me, you know? And so they start to open up a little bit. That's kind of, that's cool. Yeah. 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 Uh, let me see. I got, uh, what's the most surprising thing you've ever learned from uh, one of your interviews? Like shocking, surprising, like you discovered about an artist that was just like, wait, what? You had no idea. I mean, there's probably shit you can't talk about. Where well, you're yeah, of like, course. This dude's like a big metalhead in the public, <laughs> but he's like, Flaming. He's a Swifty, you know. <laughs> you know, behind the scenes. I'll like give you. I'll give you a good one that none of you are expecting. And me being a metalhead is going to come off and sound really bizarre. But we all know the song and the band Hoobastank, the song "The Reason." Yeah. Okay. Mm. I recently talked to the singer of that band because they're playing at Yamava, and uh, it was the twentieth anniversary of that album, which they named "The Reason," right? And then the songs, and I was like. Bro, you know, you knew, like, I just wrote the hit of a hit, right? Yeah. And he's like, nah, I just thought it was an album track. And I was like, no, you named the album after it. You knew what you had. And he's like, nope, some station in Kansas started playing the song. We, d we didn't even want to release it as a single. And I'm like. Crazy, right? That blew my mind. Yeah, that would, yeah. I was like, no, you knew, like, you knew, like, you were probably sitting on the song for five years. You knew this was like the big power ballad smash. Uh, nah, just yeah. another album cut. But I mean, I've heard I've heard that kind of similar um, scenario for a lot of artists. You know, their big song wasn't the one that they thought was going to be the one, or the one or, that they thought, yeah, or the like, style they the thought banger. they wanted yeah. to do or be. You know, it just happens. You know, what are you gonna say? What do you uh, got? I was gonna say a side note. Were Were you at Skinny when working with Paul when that happened with the the song that because the reason. Sorry, weird segue. Uh, <laughs> I had a buddy, Paul, who worked for Skinny Magazine, mm -hmm. and I know you worked for Skinny Magazine mm -hmm. around the same time. Were you... I replaced him, actually. Yeah. So when he did what he did to that song, uh, did that bear anything to you? Like, did you feel anything... Like, oh, hey, this song had some meaning in my life. It, it was a pivotal point. I didn't know that it was done to that song. Yeah. Or if I did, I, I, I certainly didn't remember it now. I just remember being annoyed that I had to play it to death on the radio at the uh -huh. time when it came uh -huh. out. But uh, I didn't remember that there was any significant... I, I remember certainly what happened. I didn't remember that there was any tie-in to that song. Oh, he left it on repeat. Oh, uh, yeah. And maybe, so for I, me, maybe I didn't know about that. So for me, it's like every time you hear that... Ding, ding, Get the fuck out. 
Like, uh, for me, that's just That's me. right. I remember you telling me that. He's like, I can't listen to that song. I, it's, it's just, just that like, one yeah. song, just doom, doom, doom. And you're like, yeah. okay, I got eight bars to fucking get the fuck out. Yeah, see, I don't think I, I mean, I knew him and worked mm -hmm. with him when I was working at the yeah. X1039 before that. Um, and then I heard what happened and then I came in. So I didn't get the complete 411 on what happened. And I wasn't going to go around asking details. Yeah, too. Everyone sure. was yeah. still. Yeah, that was just like a, whoa. Because, yeah, the, the whole transition. My band was jamming in the practice space of Skinny right. Magazine. I remember that, yeah. At the time, he was working for Skinny Magazine, <clears throat> and he picked up from where, you know, Excuse Paul, uh, our buddy Paul, he just, he was like, he was like a happy go-getter, and you never expected anything all of a sudden, just yeah, uh, over a girl and left that song on repeat. And it was shitty, and you are just like, man, wow, I didn't need that many details. But thank you, and, you know, great guy I paid tribute to him at his funeral and everything but um taking over that much energy and promotions and like you could see it like snowballing into your careers to what it is today um where did you like really fully get your start into what it is now Like where you got on the air, you know what I'm saying? Where I got on the air? Yeah, like where you were like more. Yeah, because you, you had said like the street team stuff. Like what? When, like right, what about right. When so you I like did that for a while, and then I started actually going up to uh, Bakersfield. Mm -hmm. um, I had a friend of mine, good friend of mine from high school. We did high school radio together. He pursued it, went to Fullerton College, got a job at that uh, radio station that's in the McDonald's Barstow station, the train station. Okay. They have a couple of radio stations in there. And then from there, he went to Bakersfield. And then he got me. Uh, a part-time job in Bakersfield. And then I moved and lived in Bakersfield and did radio full-time in Bakersfield for a couple of years. And then uh, <laughs> when that ran out, um, moved back down to Southern California, started working at X initially part-time and then became the promotions director there. And then went from X to KCAL and I've been at KCAL ever since. That's awesome. So it was at KCAL when you became an official on-air personality? You weren't an on-air personality at X? No, I was. You I started yeah, okay. doing yeah, yeah. weekends. That's, what, that's yeah. what I thought. Okay, And then yeah. became promotions director. Okay, yeah, yeah, for sure. So you've had countless interviews with people. Uh, I want to know like a great off-air story that you have with like a random band or a person you've interviewed, maybe you parted with them after or something like that. And if you don't want to name drop, that's fine. Also just tell the story of what was dope, you know, <laughs> like, <laughs> Oh God, uh, something off air. Yeah. So like, like, so basically that, that, that wasn't part of like an interview process. Like you did your interview and then you, you went and you hung out with these people off air. You got a good time, did something. The one that, well, it wasn't necessarily off air, but, um, we kind of partied on air together <laughs> during the interview. Nice. And uh, and I had never really done that, but he was like, hey, chips and guacamole and hot sauce and here have some beers. And uh, we partied and the whole time we were talking and his tour manager kept interrupting and he kept like waving him off, like, <laughs> I'm good, I'm good. And, and so we rolled kind of long. And uh, it's an interview I'll never forget. And then sadly, the guy is no longer with us, but the late, great Trevor Sternad from the Black Dahlia murder. Oh, okay. Uh, okay. Backstage at one of the OzFest meets not fest. I forget what year, but um, yeah, just me alone, him in the trailer just for like a half an hour. Not even necessarily partying it up, but we were just having like real conversations and, and talking about like the music like that he got into as a kid and like, him getting the first Nirvana album when he saw that he was like why is there a naked baby on this cover like I want it like and just kind of his path into rock and roll and stuff too so it was cool it was a really cool conversation not used to like walking in the artist is like here have a beer have some chips and salsa like made me feel like super relaxed and easy and had a great conversation with them yeah nice, nice. so a spinoff of what you just said what was what got young Mike Z in the middle what was, what was the band where you're like, Metallica. this is it? You know, I, I'm, I'm assuming it's probably Metallica, is it? Is, it it, it, is, it is. is. I mean, I, I had an older brother that was into like the Priest and Maiden, and then he technically showed me Metallica first, but then it kind of became my band. And then the other band that uh, went, went along with that was Megadeth, of course. 
And then of course the big four and then it all grew oh, yeah. from there. But yeah, uh, Metallica is a big one. And I'm, I'm sad to admit that I went through that phase where like, I didn't love them for a while, like during the load and reload era, kind mm-hmm. of when they cut their hair and all mm-hmm. that. But then like just seeing them now in the stadium tour and uh, the last couple albums have been really good. I'm kind of like back in love and giving them all the love and credit and respect that they deserve. Were you, at, what, were you at the last stadium show yeah. that they did? How was that, man? They looked awesome. Their yeah. stage both looked amazing. I'm at both days. It was yeah. incredible. You were to both days? Yeah. Oh, that's cool. Yeah, I in had to. hit with Jason Momoa. <laughs> I yeah. went, I I went down that. there. I saw that video. Saw he was that. there, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I saw a bunch of people. I, I didn't have great seats, but it was... <laughs> yeah, if you could afford those tickets. Yeah, right. <laughs> mosh pit with Jason Momoa. <laughs> but it was cool, though, because I got to go with the guy that uh, that was a guitar player in one of my bands in high school. Him and I used to sleep overnight, like, in his truck to be first in line at Tower Records to buy tickets. And we yeah. did that, like, decades before. And then here we were as adults like going to the Metallica show once again. And, you know, it was, it was a cool, like full circle. I just want to preface this real quick. I don't think most of our viewers know you used to have to get up, but fucking crack a dog. I was just going to say, this. Yes. to <laughs> actually <laughs> get yeah. concert tickets. You used to have to stand in line, Just to folks. get a wristband. <laughs> well, my Metallica, get- my Metallica story was like that. And I had to go to, I think it was Music Plus, And there was a wristband. It was a lottery yep. system. And we wound up getting front and row, it and we didn't were like matter how early you got there. It was, it was that stupid lottery system. Uh, Here's yeah. what number. Okay, <laughs> this well, one but goes. now now you have to fight with like resellers, and I've even heard, uh, I've heard some stuff that Ticketmaster was dumping tickets onto the resale thing and selling them at higher prices. I heard they were getting uh, well. You know, it's all fluctuating on. prices now. Yeah, right. which it's is, like airline pricing now. Yeah, which yeah, is crazy. Catch because, and fucking, yeah. Okay, now look them up again. I don't. I don't really think the artist has a say so in this at all. It seems like anymore. I don't know if they how long it's been since an artist said like, hey. But, here's but how the much artist doesn't make their show. money off ticket sales usually. Like that's. Merch. That's like, I mean, if you get a door cut, yeah, then you're still collecting as a band. But I think at a certain point when you're pre-selling tickets, that's just vendor and right. venue uh, and like. That's Live Nation buying the tour package. Yeah, it's just uh, I was, routing you. I was, uh, I was a person venues. who worked for House of Blues when they were bought by Live Nation. And it was for that whole everybody. It was just such like a oh no. Which house of blues? And, I, and, and when it was at Downtown Disney, I yeah, went yeah, yeah. pretty much two thousands. I was there. Trisha uh, Newcomb. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. And I was trying to think of his name the other day. The guy with the black hat that was a talent buyer. I can picture um, him, but I can't think of his name. Sean. He's Sean. Yeah. Striegel. Yeah. He's like he's like head <laughs> of East Coast yeah, Live he's, Nation. He's climbed up. He's like. He's like big. He's East Coast, like Live Nation, I believe now. And uh, the dude, love that guy. He when he was the talent buyer for that venue, that venue, like, like I don't know if you guys know this, but House of Blues, uh, the the Simpsons did a part where Bart Simpson opens a matchbook, and it says it says it's a matchbook from House of Blues, and it didn't say any. It said Anaheim. Because Anaheim House of Blues was the shit. Yeah. And we had the talent uh, buyer. I remember uh, weeks going doing Ice Cube to Kill Switch. I mean, we had like, I mean, just. But the beginning of the end was that Machine Head tour when they had to reroute Machine Head mm-hmm. from there to, because to of the Disney. Glass House because yeah. of Disney. I remember. I was like, Machine Head? I remember out of shows, all bands? I remember shows happening and our production manager coming up to us. And uh, CKY was mm-hmm. playing. And they had this shirt that said CKY, but it said F-U- CKY, oh, you, you know what I'm saying? So yeah. I said, fuck you. And we had to go out there with gaff tape and gaff tape kids t shirts because they're standing <laughs> out in downtown Disney <laughs> and all of their shirts say, fuck you. Yeah. I remember when uh, I, I played there with a, one of my previous bands. It was it was a hassle, dude. With the, well, the security and all that stuff like, there. It's just. They're like, they check all your. All your Promotional stuff, all your pictures. To Every go to your car has to go through like, the whole And at the time, thing. we had just did a photo shoot with like, this girl murdering us all so like we had to like go and like pull all those pictures down and everything like yeah yeah they, was, they look at you like, they what yeah we so had just, house yeah. of blues had to get they each have band approved yeah they had to, to be able approved. to play at house of blues because it was on disney property yeah. yeah so like slayer was carrie king was at every metal show he was always upstairs yeah, on the uh-huh. rose terrace every uh-huh. metal show i mean it didn't matter right i mean you could still never played that venue i don't think he's played that venue i just not gonna happen. Disney would not allow. But I think now that it's uh, it's not. Yeah, it's Garden that, Walk now. But that's still Disney property. 
Yeah. But it's not on their on, actual park resort. Yeah. You know, it's off. And, so. and they did the one thing that the old venue didn't do, slope. Yeah. I've, I have not. I've seen pictures. I have not been you to that. Been venue. there yet? I've been there. It's awesome. Oh, we yeah. almost awesome. went one oh, time. Yeah. Um, I played see through the bar. Yeah. Oh, that's My the last band, we played the their smaller room. It's like their foundation room mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Yeah. Still an awesome room. That's amazing. Great right. sound. Yeah, yeah, but the old place is gone. The old place is gone. The old place is a bowling alley now. Yeah, yeah, but the new place. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, the new the new House of Blues is awesome, dude. Yeah, if you have sound been there. is amazing. Yeah. I bet even yeah. the sound in their bar area. My 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 uh, my well, cousin and, owns a drumming school and he does showcases there with the kids. I mean, I'll have you know, there's some pretty good audio guys that work for that company. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Parish room's great too. Sound in there is good. Yeah, in yeah. the small room, right. which we, they never had the other place. No, it was that the other venue was so much smaller than what I, I like. I said I haven't been in it, but. I knew how small that venue was. I remember doing Rob. Was it 12? It was 1,050 was the okay. capacity. I remember doing, uh, have you been in the back backstage area, the hallway? Um, we did Rob <laughs> Zombie there. And- you know guys want to laugh? The, you know the one band I got to bring on at the old House of Blues? What's that? Switchfoot. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> yeah, but Rob Zombie came in and they had the, the robot. I don't know. It's, yeah. I think it's like 14 feet tall. Mm-hmm. And the person that wears that had to like literally walk down that hallway. And like, oh. and like there was people that had to like pick it up and put it and then walk out. Because it uh. wasn't like you could put it together and just go. It was almost like you're putting it together as you're walking on stage. And it was just, it was wild. It was like, we're doing this. And maybe you could just ask How the guy this, that did it. You're looking at this hallway and this thing <laughs> coming down. You're just like, holy shit, this <laughs> is happening. Just ask the guy that did it. I was like, <laughs> right here, right here. Yeah, this, this tall guy right here. <laughs> Still. <laughs> you got another question for Mike Yeah. Here? here we go. Um, so you've been to probably lots of concerts. Probably. Um, <laughs> which one? Which one was the uh, the one that sits with you like the most memorable uh, experience at a concert you've ever had? Whether it be recently or all yeah, time. this week or what? Yeah. yeah, the Metallica show is still resonating with me. Oh, and I'm sure you just I never even went to my seat. Yeah, it was the end of August. Yeah, um, you know, from the presentation. Granted, I I still think I would have rather seen them with the traditional stage and then back together. But there were a lot of times where they were like jamming together. You could see them all together, and oops, and it felt like a a, a band. Yeah. That was my concern with like being on a racetrack. Like they're all spread out, but yeah. they did have some good jam parts. They played deep cuts. They played instrumentals. Like they kind of played it all. Like nothing was it to like complain th- about. was it like three hours probably? Yeah, it was like two hours and no repeat weekend. So like okay. None of the same songs. Like Friday was one set list, oh. Saturday or Sunday was yeah. another. I saw one of them. They opened with one, right? What was it? Did they open with one or was it? They like played a, one, but oh, they okay. opened with. Uh, well, that person on TikTok. Creeping lied. Death, I think, on the yeah. first night. And then I can't remember now. Dude, imagine yeah. having that big of a catalog, dude, to be like, we're going to play two nights in a row, different songs each At night. At that point, yeah. I would you just, you <laughs> just <laughs> imagine <laughs> being able what to afford to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Put, it, put it on like, shuffle, right? And just see what happens. You know? What other band can do that where it doesn't matter what they play? Like, you're not going for that one song. Yeah. Right. That's you're crazy. going for the whole deal. Yeah, yeah, especially considering most no, bands just, are like, we're going to go on tour. This is the set. We rehearse it. This is what, we, we rehearse what we're going to do. Right. To be like, hey, we're going to play back to back different songs each night. That's nuts, dude. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah, man. we're going to play Inner Sandman, not my favorite, but we're going to play Inner Sandman one night and not another night. They, you know, they closed with Master of Puppets the first night and then Sandman the next. Well, that's kind of a big deal cuz I mean, even for Metallica, Inner Sandman is a ginormous song. Really big song. So, said, so not to play that. You said that wasn't your favorite. What's your favorite Metallica song? Uh, Black and Well, uh, yeah. Master. Master. Mm. I've been doing this a lot lately. Master, Blackened, Damage. Nice. Blackened is the first Metallica song I ever heard. Me and too. I instantly fell in love Me with too. it. Me too. I'm in the same boat. I've Master 2, the whole album is amazing. But um, that- The song, just because I think it's so epic, it, it, it's heavy, it's mm-hmm. got melodic, the breakdown, like, I think it's the full- yeah. Metallica gamut. You kind of get everything Thrashy, in that song. It's, yeah, it's melodic. A little James double solo in the middle there is brilliant too. Like, yeah. so I think that's, yeah, that's got to be number one. And then Blacken because of hearing that so early on. Yeah. For sure. That was, that was like the first one for me. That's the one that really pulled me in. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. That's what I've been doing a lot on, on my show is debating this year uh, Ride the Lightning versus Master of Puppets. That's tough. 
<laughs> well, it's all about when you got into the band, I right. think. Yeah. Me, me was, was Justice for All, because yeah. Black Kids, so that was... Yeah. yeah, but I think it's like the first album that you take in. Like, there, there's always going to be that one hit, but the album, like, you go out to buy of that band is going to be the one that you're just like, that one. Right. Well, but out of those two, out of Ride the Lightning versus Master of Puppets, you have an opinion which one you like better. Yeah, it's depending on when you fell on to liking Metallica. Like, did you like Metallica when they came out with Kill 'Em All? And I'm then, not that old. And then I'm old, but I ain't that old. <laughs> no, no, no. But I'm saying like you. Heard, I came in and I came in on Blacken and Injustice, and yeah. then went back. Yeah, but well, like yeah. you, Same you here. heard like Kill 'Em All, and then you got on and, and Ride the Lightning, or you know or master whenever you fell onto the metallica train it's usually the album after that you took in you're just like wow this this impacts me like a lot of people fell on the black album because they fell on sure because of one right and that's my because well, that got a lot of wait 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 wait, 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 wait. the black album One's not on the black album. No, oh, it's not. not and they fell from. on. So because what, he, what you're saying is, is they were pulled in from one from because one. it was on MTV, uh, and right? And they pulled in from so one and they fell on the black poser. album, God, as opposed to too. you know falling on the album before <laughs> and falling on Master. Like for me, I think Load identified to me most of all just because of how diverse it was. Okay, it wasn't like cool. Hitting you in the face the whole fucking time. Here's a here's a solo. Load load bitching. load hurt. Don't get me, me wrong. It, it was me. just something different. It was something like, wow. Like I thought you went different with the black album. Don't get me wrong. You had your radio hits and it was a little softer, but it was just like a oh. Yeah. <laughs> everyone was just like fuck. You didn't this. know you could downshift one more time. <laughs> yeah, everyone just you threw it in reverse and you're like, wait, what the fuck? Here's a country song. And for me, it was just like. I'll give it a chance and listen to it. And I was like, okay, I could actually listen to this album and it's Metallica. It's a bunch of other shit that cleanses your palate, like eating sushi. Like you're supposed to cleanse your palate and then so try is, the next is thing. So is load like eating sushi? So I what's your wasabi? Is it Ride the Lightning or is it Master of Puppets? Oh, for me, it's Master. I'm going to go yeah. Master. I'm going to go Master. <laughs> yeah. go master. As much you as I love go Ride master. the Lightning, I, I got to I I gotta gotta say that's the one for me that's the... Yeah. I gotta be honest, out of everybody at this table, I didn't grow up a Metallica fan, mostly because I didn't get into metal until like Corn and System. Mm -hmm. And I grew up. He was banging in sync. I grew up in art. Yeah. He the running joke in the podcast is I'm a huge in sync fan, which I really am. It's so, not like, a joke. That's the problem. I, I hope to God they're announcing a tour soon. But like, I, so I grew up an RB singer. And so that's, that's where like my background is. And then it was so I'm like, you know, you guys talk about the big four. My big four would have probably been like Corn System, Limp Biscuit, and like Slipknot or some shit. You know, like, <laughs> like well, that's, that's what I. That's what I. That's what brought me into metal. It was okay, those, was those. Bands. So then I'll give you that. It, it's funny because you talk about interviewing. When I first started off, I used to do. I used to come up with questions and put bands into categories to get bands to participate. And so for what you're talking about, I would call it like the new metal six pack. Okay. And, and I'll get your is opinion this, on this. Is this, a, is this a, like, like the big that. four, the new metal? Yeah, 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 yeah. That was right. I have the big four, flannel five, new metal six pack. That's awesome. Metal core seven. I don't know. I'm working on it still. Okay. TBD. But so uh, who's the who's the new metal six pack? Yeah, okay, this so this is. Uh, let me see if I remember it. It's Corn, System, Slipknot, Lincoln Park, Disturbed, Rage. Nice. Huh? Ah, I'll drink that six pack, dude, yeah. all day. <laughs> Which would be your favorite out of them? Uh, for me, it would probably be Corn. Corn. Corn was the first band that got me into metal. It was like that got me into rock music in general, whatever you want to label it as. The it first was, album, it or was, was it? Uh, the Fall of the Leader album? Okay. Yeah, I've told the story before, but my uncle gave me a random CD one time for Christmas. Never gave me a gift before or after that. He was just like, "Here, Merry Christmas." I was like, "What the hell is this?" Changed my life. Which, you know? one, which <laughs> so, one was it, though? It was the Fall, Fall of the Year album. Yeah, Fall of the Year album, yeah. By the way, my daughter said hi. Hi. She's hi. watching. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh, yeah. For me, I would say out of those, it would be, I, I think Corn was the big one for me. Yeah. So you you want, do you want to hit Mike with another question or you want to take a quick break real quick? I don't know. How do you feel? Want to take a break? Let's take a break. Okay, we'll take a break real quick, guys, and we'll be right back. Yo, thanks for checking out the show. You can always check out my show on the radio, 96.7. 
Oscar in the Inland Empire, Saturday night, 10 to midnight. Always online at MikeZ967. Podcast, video, interviews on YouTube at MikeZ967. Basically anywhere at MikeZ967 you should find me. Now back to the show. And we're back, guys. Uh, you know, took a little break, skis. Yeah. Yeah. So, uh, a little breather. Mike, we've had a few, <laughs> we had a couple of questions on Instagram All right. for you. All right. Uh, one of them was from Gravy Train. <laughs> and this is going to be a really quick answer because it's just a simple this or that. Okay. Uh, boxers or briefs? Oh, boxers. Boxers, definitely, right? I'm like, who says briefs these days, you know? It's boxers or commando, bro, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, of course. <laughs> Gotta breathe. Are you a briefs, dude? You, you, you paused, bro. I'm a boxer brief guy. Yeah, I'm a boxer yeah, okay. brief. Well, I, I still consider those boxers, bro. I still consider those boxers. I'm a boxer briefs person, too. Yeah. Like the, and you know what the problem is, is I feel like I burn through underwear quicker than... Then I should burn. But the burn problem is, <laughs> I, burn, word was burn. Burn. I burn through them. But you here's why. You farted through it or what? No, but like I'm doing double duty because then next thing you know, I'll Does look over. Does that mean go, inside out? No, it mean, I, I look over and my wife's going to bed in my underwear as well. So I'm like, what the fuck? Well, I mean, there's a hole in them, so you're good. No, no. <laughs> no, but. The burn hole. But then you the look burn at, hole. <laughs> But then you look the at the laundry room. and it's just like all your underwear is in the laundry. I'm like, I wonder why. Like, I'm burning through it twice as fast. Because Next she, time wear hers then to get her that, back. There you go, dude. Thong it up, bro. I don't know if it, it won't support anything. <laughs> this is going to be painful for me at that part. I think it's going to be painful for us all. <laughs> <laughs> Is the spring going the front or the back? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, so before so it goes, before it goes, before it goes really off the rails. Hey, the before it goes off the rails, do you want to do another shot? Oh, another shot. Okay. There we go. Oh my God. The, uh, yeah, the no second part. question, Mike, was if at any point in your life or currently if you were a wrestling fan, who we're all, we're us oh. two over here are big wrestling fans. Okay. Who's your favorite wrestler? All time or currently or? Both. Let's go both. Uh, this, this implies you're a current wrestling day fan? So... I'm kind of like one foot in. I'm not fully in. I, I don't have enough time to dedicate to totally watch Raw and SmackDown every week. But I YouTube try and recaps. watch. But you're like me. Probably follow social media and get all your updates that way. Kind of, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I try to watch the pay-per-views. Especially my wife bought Peacock for some, I don't know, whatever show. And I was like, oh, okay, I can watch all this wrestling yeah. stuff too. Yeah, so. for sure. <laughs> um, Ooh. So all time, like the, the, the go-to answer would always be the dragon. Ricky Steamboat. Oh, nice answer. If you want to go old school, more recently, massive Hardy Boy, and in particular, Jeff fan, especially oh, okay. the TLC and all that. You watch his current, do you watch his current stuff in AEW? I try to watch them both a little bit, but it's a match here and there. And like, again, I don't have the time to, yeah. to totally dedicate to it. Um, as far as current... Um, no fucking way. Oh, he's going to do beautiful. it. That's beautiful. You I do that believe. while I think. I'm trying to think. Of I, I will, can't I will preface with the bottom half is soda, guys. Okay. <laughs> uh, cheers, Mike. Cheers. It's all Jaeger. <laughs> oh, no. Ooh. How was that? He's still going. Oh. Well, it's nice because oh. he's got the chaser. Oh, okay. You know? So it's just, you don't have to worry about slamming something after. You're a Jaeger over Jameson guy? Yeah, I had a roommate, my old guitar player, who went to the Metallica shows. He, uh, Before I got married, we were living together, and he was a big Jaeger guy, so he kind of got me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, I people can, like, what? I can't do it, man. No. We did a Jaeger party once. Yeah, no, I'm totally a Jaeger guy. Like, I'm with you on this. I'm not a Jaeger guy, but I don't mind it. Like, no, I don't shudder like, when people are like, oh, No, Jaeger. because we I'm went like, through that whole phase of, like, Jagger and it's like cool whatever energy drink monster red yeah. bull rock star whatever yes. you had you just cool ready to go to work right i just don't wired. like black licorice yeah me neither nobody me neither. does nobody does like do if it, you, yeah. Jager tried coming out with different flavors too and it was just like did mm, they yeah 
Did they? I never yeah. even saw that. Oh yeah, it shows how well it did. <laughs> yeah, well, like, yeah, they did like a honey and thing. Did yeah, they, they like did a honey. Did, and hasn't everybody and like, done the honey thing at this I point? So. I think with like honey jack is not for me. Dude. Even weed, like <laughs> honey weed. Yeah. Oh, what? Yeah. No. Did we do that right now? Honey smokes? No, I've I don't, smokes? I don't <laughs> think that was honey weed. <laughs> yeah, right. But uh Yeah, for sure. Uh so yeah, so your your current day would be Jeff Hardy, uh, you said. Yeah. Well, I'm trying to think of someone uh more recent that I really like. Um I do like Ricochet. Ricochet's dope. Yeah. That's one of the more more newer, younger guys that I, I, I over on the AEW side, Scorpio Sky I, is my high school best friend. Oh really? Yeah. So he, to think he, it, he just he just came back from an injury this past Friday on a collision. Yeah, Saturday. Sorry. You're like the one dude that looks like Ricochet, but he's on AEW. That's that was my a, buddy bro. That was, was a coincidence, bro. <laughs> just, oh, okay. <laughs> that was a coincidence. Different wrestling style, but yeah, okay. Yeah, but Rick, Ricochet's awesome though, dude. He had that match with uh, Logan Paul recently. That was yeah. I saw that at that SummerSlam. Yeah, which watch. by the way, Logan Paul has no right to be that good at wrestling, dude. He's did he, amazing. Did, did he get hurt? <laughs> he's he's so did he get hurt Didn't on that you one? notice like the the caliber of wrestling amongst the celebrities has, has gone up has since gone Johnny up. Knoxville, dude. Well, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but Johnny Knoxville nailed his part 100%. Did you see the Johnny Knoxville WrestleMania match? He wrestled. No. Who, who did, did he wrestle? wrestle? Dude, that's. Um, who did he wrestle? It is probably, right? That's probably something like that. He, anyways, he was smart and he was like, look, yeah, I can't like wrestle. Sammy's I'm not athletic. Something. I'm from Jackass. They literally pulled out like a giant mousetrap from under the ring and like used that as to win the match, like he captured the guy in the mousetrap. We man came out from under the ring, started beating the shit out of people. It was awesome. Was it, it was it was really Sammy good. Zane? It was there we go. It was yeah, Sammy Zane. Sammy Zane, Sammy Zane always Zane, throws dude. himself like him and Kevin Owens. You know? Sammy Zane was going back and forth with Jackass for uh, with uh, Johnny Knoxville for a while to the point to where Johnny Knoxville put Sammy Zane's phone number on one of those planes that fly by with the banners on a beach and he was just getting phone calls from everybody uh, and, that, and he started answering like the the facetimes like he, if he noticed like it was a kid calling he would be like make the kids day and be like hey well, stop bothering me you know i'm trying to sleep you know whatever you know whatever it was like type of thing. yeah, yeah that's, i thought that that was cool that he started answering fans phone calls with it that is cool to see like some of the guys like uh like my half in like seeing these guys in like aw like that are getting to flourish like uh uh damn it i just lost his name um uh, but there's a lot of guys that didn't have big roles in like wwe that are now like making moves and oh yeah up on like the miro and malachi black and like the guys that used to be in wwe yeah, yeah, I, feel yeah. Sure. I feel what you're saying yeah oh, i'm trying to think of what's that one dude I'm talking about andrade Nah, nah, trying to list all the dudes that go are, old school like christian <laughs> christian no more dude more christian's doing guy. amazing work in aew right now yeah he is he's in a storyline with jack perry and jack perry is the son of luke perry he's a oh, he's a well, resident uh, uh, storyline real yeah, quick he's yeah. always and he always, and so obviously luke perry's passed and so his whole thing was like oh you know talking about his dead dad and say hi to your mom for me. And so now he's just been going into feuds with wrestlers whose dads have passed. And it's amazing, dude. Christian is so fucking good, dude. He's the best. <laughs> the conquistadors, dude. Yes, dude. <laughs> the conquistadors. Yeah. Hell yeah. There's a rumor that Edge might be going to AEW, by the way. Really? Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. Yeah, dude. That, the, those uh, A a and e docs that they've been doing recently Those are and, then, awesome. and then the dark side of the ring that's that all that stuff's really got he's me a back fan into dude. It. he's yeah. a fan Hell i just yeah, don't dude. have the time to quite yeah. keep up i like, feel you dude it's like it's a lot of three work. hours smackdown's two hours and then there's like seven hours of AEW. yeah week. Just, it's a lot dude. but there's the highlights. That yeah, there's highlights the beauty part is what culture you can just watch them and see the yeah. <laughs> see the, the highlights of it well i stuff. feel like i gotta keep up with instagram just to keep up with you guys and <laughs> I don't do the TikTok, so it's just like when I go on the Instagram, it's just like that's the only. Oh, okay, that happened. Cool. All right, that. All right. We'll spin this off for a question for you, Mike. How important is it for you that you feel to keep up with current day events, being a radio DJ? You know what I mean, like as far as like define current day events. So just like Aliens. you, you, you <laughs> said you open up, you open up the, your your internet and you look at this and that in the mornings and like stuff like that. Like, 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 like yeah, the, the, like rock metal. 
So, so when you're keeping up with current day stuff, it's more music based as opposed to like the world type yeah. of stuff. Yeah. yeah. Wait, so. wait, there's a world. I there's a know. world out there. That world. Yeah, I choose stay to away from in, that place. Bro. I, I choose to, <laughs> to stay away from that stuff and just live in fantasy land and worry about like we'll slay or reunite and that yes. kind of stuff. Like, yeah. I feel you there, dude. Yeah. It's a good place. Yeah. It's a good place to be, good man. Good place. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I, I, I stay away from all that. I, music's enough drama to fill up my car, dude. <laughs> <laughs> for sure. So I, I got a question for you. So you do Wired in the Empire. Mm -hmm. uh, you uh, always dedicate the last song to a local band. Yep. Which uh, is awesome that you still, that you do that. That uh, it's kind of hard to find you know what i mean that radio stations willing to give love to the local scene like yeah, that yeah. it's cool what goes into your process of picking like i'm sure you get loaded with emails you know what i mean uh is it more of a i kind of have a personal i've met these people they're kind of cool let me check out their music or is it a caliber of music that you hold as yeah opposed i mean to it's picking, gotta be good you know what i mean like it's not sounding like somebody just did it in their garage right. type deal yeah, thing yeah, you know? yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's got to be good, and then B, it helps if you're from the IE, but not mandatory. Okay, right. Oh, that's 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 a good that's good to know. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah, and then see if I see you around and at shows, and you're hustling, and you're whether it's online or out in the streets. Like, I appreciate that as well. Yeah, nice. definitely. Yeah, uh, as far as as that goes, I just wanted to take the time to personally thank you. You're always rocking our merch. You're always super supportive of us. You've played. You guys album. do have the best hat, dude. Thank you. <laughs> you <laughs> that is that. like my new favorite hat, by nice. the way. Link Go in the bio. Hat. Link in the bio, it's by awesome. the way. <laughs> yeah, link in the bio. See, it's right there. This one right there. Rob's uh, modeling it for us, right there. Yeah. But uh, wow, yeah, man, just new, you know, just yeah. thank you so much for uh, just being a huge supporter of this band. And yeah, and to amazing. that, I ask, what drew you to our music? Because we've talked about this a little bit. We talked about a little bit, a little bit this on the at the cave. Can you talk about us for a minute? Talk about us. <laughs> hey, Mike, we just... put over the last days of war really quick. <laughs> well, no, I think I think I'll, I'll do it real quick. You want to know metalcore and bringing that industrial tip to it? That's yeah. the shit that gets me. Hell yeah! Like yeah. I said in the beginning, I started off playing drums and band. I was in an industrial band, so I have a big love for industrial metal, and I feel like all these people kind of it's like the trendy word, but I don't feel like everyone always gets it, and I feel like you guys do get it. Yeah. Yeah. I always I, I like to put it as in like we're not trying to reinvent the wheel, but we're trying to bring back stuff that people loved. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. we're just That's giving you something you can roll with. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of our inspirations just come from that era of music that you, that you, you know, that you talk about, that you loved, like we're very deaf tones, nine inch nails, slip not influence. You were saying industrial metal. What are some of your other industrial metal bands that you would listen to? Like, what do you I mean, listen to in your car as opposed to what you play? Like, I get what you So the last play. days of war just played. What's the next song? <laughs> <laughs> no, but like if, from there. <laughs> no, but like if you're listening to something as opposed to what you have to play at work, uh, but you. Um, it, it's a funny question because a, a lot of the time my listening is so scripted. It's who I'm talking to next, what show I'm going to next. It's listening slash research. Yeah. 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 So, I mean, that takes up a lot. I That's mean, kind of a weird thing that you kind of have to steer your music life. Yeah. You know, that's... Yeah. That's that's what I'm listening to. It's who am I talking to next or who am I going to see next? Or even if I know they're not the next, I know it's coming up. So yeah. I better, if I can get a couple of listens in now. And lately I've been forcing myself. We all know albums come out on Friday. So go through on Friday who's got the new album out. Let me try and listen to that all the way through. Let me yeah. listen to that album all the way through. At least give it one spin all the way through. And I like listening to a lot of talk and podcasts and stuff too. Nice. Yeah. What are some local bands that you love to play on your show other than us, obviously? You know what I'm saying? Besides you guys. <laughs> oh, good plug. Yeah. Um, I don't know. There's a, there's like a little group of like homies that, I know are cool and always produce good music and I can count on for quality music. Um, you guys, Cerebellion, Against the Sun, Breaking Serenity, yep. Mendenhall, Experiment. Yeah. Um, I'm getting ready to do something with Breaking Serenity, by the way. Yeah. Oh, cool. Yeah. 
And Sira is another good one. Wait, um, we've, we've talked about this. The Breaking Serenity song. That's great. Go ahead, Mike. Keep going. Keep going. Yeah, yeah, keep going. Mike. You, keep going, Mike. You, you I'm surprised you didn't like, to begin with because they put out like 85 collabs to yeah. already. <laughs> yeah. You weren't All, in that first batch? The first time <laughs> I met them was through you at the Kager. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. That, was, that wow. was the connection. You were my connection to Breaking Serenity right there. Yeah. That's great. I mean, I mean, it's about time they get you. I mean, they haven't gotten everybody yet. They're going to get everybody <laughs> yeah. to collab with them. Yeah. Wear a condom. <laughs> <laughs> That's what it sounds like. Just protect yourself, yeah, okay? Just protect yourself, yeah. okay? Yeah. But yeah, I mean... That, yeah, no. That's the most fun. local bands. Yeah, I think. That's, that's cool. Yeah, that's cool, man. You got a question from? Go for it. <laughs> uh, well, I guess. Uh, let's see. Um, what are some of the common misconceptions about life as a radio DJ? Like, you know, uh, I'm pretty sure people have an opinion out there. Like, uh, you know, you're just always rolling to shows and this and that. Um, like what what in your life is is like cooler because you do this job and what what about it is like not not that amazing you know i mean is there anything I'm about it not rich and or famous from doing it all but uh right yeah i mean there's not a lot of money that goes into it. it's just a lot of sweat equity and love and just like you guys oh. you yeah know? yeah you well, know? and another thing too is you just you know, like we're sitting here now, you meet a lot of really cool people. Mm -hmm. You know, yeah. I it's imagine just a that's got to be really is definitely. how I look at it. You know, almost yeah. like it's what you do. You go to shows, you listen to music, drink, hang out, like talk about music. It's just part of the lifestyle, but certainly not rich and or famous. Like from any of it, like there's yeah. not a lot of money in it, yeah. well, as you know, on the we artist side. Into it. As we a, get into it because we love it. Yeah. Like, yeah. As an independent yeah. artist, we understand. Well, I mean, yeah, you're yeah. talking about the misconception. <laughs> that's a misconception. Yeah, right? for sure. Yeah. Yeah. That's a misconception then. Otherwise, it's just all pure love. Like, Yeah, for sure. That's cool, cool. man. Yeah, yeah definitely. Uh, you mentioned uh, industrial music. Uh, what is, uh, do you have any big industrial, like, uh, bands you follow, influences and stuff? Um, I mean, <laughs> yeah, I'm just, isn't that what I asked? <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. But I, I, I mean, like, yeah, yeah, take it. Yeah. go for it. Did, yeah, did go we go, it. did we that get into it? Like, I think I a know. deeper dive. In yeah, it. There but like, yeah, yeah, for sure. Yeah, but like that genre. <laughs> like the Nine Inch Nails, the, of course. Uh, love Nine Inch Nails, the Ministry, like all the that. Like, have you interviewed Trent Reznor? No. No. Oh, that'd be awesome. Dude. For, yeah. Chop off my left. For so me, they don't get more music debates. That's my other one too. Album one versus two. Okay. If you're all Nine Inch Nails fans. Mm -hmm. Well, album one was an EP. No. Yeah. Pretty. I'm saying. I'm not. This isn't. We're not going broken. based off Halos. Pretty Hate Machine versus Downward Spiral. Oh. For me, it's Downward Spiral. Thank you. Yes. Well, yeah, that was a darker period in his life. And that's like, like we were going back to talking about, Ooh. sorry, sorry. Uh, Could have been like bad. we were going back to talking about, like you hop on with the song from the previous album to see what they come out with next. And that next album envelops you yeah. and encompasses you in that your next year of life. And you're like, I totally fucking relate to this album. Like, see, you say that. And like some I don't, for a got, lot of for a lot of people that doesn't happen. No, too, it's I don't for think. most people. I think. Well, for me, I'm more of a like this album's awesome. I'm just gonna fucking listen to this album till I'm tired. You, of you it. do that. You know what I mean? Like, I, I, I literally I do that. Feeling, I literally do that. Like yeah. it's not. It's not like I love this album. Let me see what else they have. It's like I'm gonna listen. to this No, shit I'll be like for three months ever. in, and I'll be like, <laughs> I should probably listen to fucking something else. Yeah, at some for point. sure. You know that uh, happens. Uh, what about you? What well, you? that yeah, I was gonna. Kind of, I'm kind of more like you, like the opposite. Like we were talking earlier about Metallica coming in and Justice. The next album was the Black album. I listen to Master of Puppets way more than I listen to the Black <laughs> album. Yeah. So. Yeah. For me, recently it was uh, Devil Wears Prada. Uh, I think oh. the album Color Decay. Yeah, I that love that. Dude, I had that so album on good. repeat for like three months. I swear, and I was just like, amazing. So good. Such a good so album. Good. Like such an amazing transition from where they've where they started to where they are now. And I just from I, Sass Sassafras and all that. And yeah, I just I feel like they, they're definitely a band that we've watched kind of grow, you know, and mature as, sure. as musicians and artists, which is really cool. That yeah. was really cool. Uh, 
uh, getting to talk to Mike Heronica from that band mm -hmm. uh, recently for the tour I went to last night. Um, and just get to gush on him about his vocal style. And like, but the thing I really love about what they did, and you guys do this too sometimes, about Color Decay, if you want to geek out on that for mm -hmm. a second, I love when they mix Mike's dirty vocals with Jeremy's clean singing at mm -hmm. the same time. Oh, like yeah. That's yeah. butter. Right. Oh, no, it's it's amazing when they do that. And like, like I said, that whole album. I, we do do that, bro. No. Hey, look at butter over here. <laughs> Call Buttered us, sausage. Call us butter. <laughs> yeah, but that, 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 that album, that when I heard that album, that was just one of those albums. Another one is uh, Bad Omens. Um, their, their latest, is, it's just, the whole album's just amazing. It's great. Love I interviewed it. him on the album before. I haven't listened a whole lot to the new one, but. Um, what, what, are yeah. some of, what are some of your favorite newer up and coming bands that are like bigger, obviously, than the independent scene, like as far as like a. Like Day Seeker Spirit and Spirit Box oh, and like big, bands yeah. like that. Like, what are some of your favorite bands that you love? Sleep doing? Token's a big one, yeah. right? That's, That's one band. That, are you guys into them? Sleep Token. Mm. What I've heard, I've, I've think, enjoyed. I think, I, I'm not gonna lie and say I've listened to everything, but like the one song that they've got really popular for, I dig that song. They you know have I mean? they have a bunch of stuff that I like. They have a bunch of stuff that I'm, it doesn't really do it for me, but um, the musicianship involved in it is. There's some stuff going on there that's that we don't see a lot in certain genres of music that mm. I feel like we're seeing here. And it's uh, the song. There's a song. I think it's "Take Me to Eden." It's about eight minutes long, and they go into this kind of whole jazz kind of portion of the song, and it's just, bro. It, it any eight minute song from anybody is a hard sell for me, bro. Yeah. Really? Yeah. That's yeah. I can't do it, dude. There's so many Are you bands that have like. I'm with you, man. I kind of like, look. I kind of want the hook. Like I yeah. love, like, I'll go on the journey, I love, but I need a hook. I love Tool, but this song could have ended well, three minutes ago. You know, you know what I mean? Like, like, if you like, go Tool, Perfect song, Circle, like, holy I will. I, but I'm see, a big, I'm a big perfect circle. perfect circle over Tool fan. Uh, but see, I'm not. You know, I love oh, Tool. I love Tool. But Perfect Circle's so much more easier to just digest. I feel like. See, here, here's my alternate to that because I'm with you. I call it Poor Man's Tool, but my Poor Man's Tool. Is Chevelle okay? Okay, okay. really? Because I think I they're like, like I love. I, 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 I really like Chevelle. Yeah, yeah they're I, influenced by Deftones. For no, sure, I right? think it, I think it's a total knockoff. Okay, <laughs> well, it's very, like in the style, but I think vocally sounds like Maynard kind of a lot. I can see that. Same, I, I, I can see definitely that. influence, right? Big time, right? I mean, even if it's not influence, they're pitch maybe i don't know okay. i'm not a singer yeah, I was yeah. a bad the, drummer, range, but the range the range is like real close and i feel like it's like simple man's tool like i'm gonna give you some four minutes and four four yeah of vowels yeah, yeah rather only, than we're only doing four chords here yeah, yeah yeah it's real just yeah yeah so we kind of veered never off really associated oh, yeah. the two but that's a crazy yeah that's a crazy analogy i could see that yeah definitely yeah. definitely Holy hell i always associated them with deftones i'm like he's he's going the wrong pitch like he's got to be off key if he's trying to be off deftones you know right. <laughs> <laughs> no I, I i hear what you're saying i get it just yeah, around the fur like mm, what no, that's not that what key that's in like yeah, but, he, Chino, Chino does his yeah, thing. Just, yeah. So, right. so, so the, so the newer up and I'm incoming bigger bands that you're into that you would say. You should just ask him to say our band's name. <laughs> you just say our band's name. <laughs> the last days of war. Thank you. <laughs> now let's move on to the next question. Clip it, we're done. What's your sex life like? <laughs> 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 I didn't even know we got through my nine inch nails debate. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> did we? Wait, what? what was the what was the debate? Uh, pretty hate machine pretty versus down. Oh, I said down was spiral. Oh no, that's apples and oranges. Like <laughs> no, to be on like as a nine inch nails fan, like you take the solidarity albums. Like this is what he released, and then he released a remix album of pretty much each one of his albums. Mm -hmm. And you're just like, there's bangers off of every single fucking thing this did, this guy touches. Like, it's amazing. So for me, not to get homo, sorry. But- No, go like, ahead, get homo. Like, pretty hate machine. Like, I grew up with, had like a whole sin. Um, sin is the best song on that album, yeah. That's oh, right. but there's so many. Like, Ring Finger, <laughs> you have- uh, 
What uh, the 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 one that was in uh, Natural Born Killers? Wasn't it Burn? Didn't he do something separate? Yeah, he did Burn. But there's another track that was off Pretty Hate Machine, the fucking Quiet Melody, uh, Somewhere I Belong. No, uh, that's no, that's something I yeah, never that's, have. That's Lincoln something Park. I never had. <laughs> yeah. Um, I was like, no, the piano, the the, the, the ballad. Yeah, yeah, that. Oh, beautiful. Well done. You're just like. So if for, for that was the very first Nine Inch Nails song I heard, and I kept waiting for it to like kick in, and it never does. Oh. Yeah, yeah. No, it does though. But what oh, what, what album has so uh, "Bite the Hand That Feeds"? That's the fragile. Yeah, that. no, with no, no, no. It's with teeth. It's with teeth. Yeah, yeah. with the teeth. That for, was on that. So, that was sober, my kind of like up. introduction okay, into so Nine you didn't no? like you weren't a with teeth fan. Really? Yeah. I don't like disco either, and that's what that fucking song has a <laughs> disco beat in it. You know what? Yeah, fair it's enough. It's very. Yeah, it is. Mm, mm, it is. <laughs> for for me, I I I'm, I, I hear you. Uh, I think it's very indie. Pretty it's Hate Machine is rock. where I was introduced to Nine Inch Nails. When Pretty Hate Machine? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, but I I think they're I think you're I think we're kind of scratching on just two totally different things. Where I think that for me, Downroad Spiral is such a just a fucking piece of art. Yeah. The, it's like, a journey, yeah, right? Definitely. Yeah, I mean, you right? have. You have I mean, it's so. It's one of the few albums I can listen to I, from beginning to end. Trent Reznor is yeah. one of those artists yeah. that yeah. I'm just like, I can't even answer that because it's fuck. You know, no, I mean, I would, I would. You have broken in between, right? Of course, that's, and then you also that's that's everyone. Fixed. Everyone I right. ask this to always goes broken. <laughs> that's not the question. It's <laughs> yeah, album no, one it's, versus <laughs> album two. Like, hey, man, I asked you this. In all honesty, it's. It's album one versus album three. I would definitely say that the Downward Spiral is a released, bigger, better album. Broken, and he, you're just. But that's like, not an album; it's an EP. Oh, wow. we got you. Yeah, bro. burn. And, but hear me out. He released. It I'll talk about that EP all day long too. But that's an album versus LP versus EP. Mm, okay, so but that's I'm a that's about, a number of tracks differential, right? Well, I always okay, forget. So you have your Halo system. If you're not follow, doing Halos, yeah. The first full length album, the first LP is Pretty Hate Machine. Mm-hmm. The second is down is Downward Spiral. Downward Spiral. Downward Spiral. Right. So, what was yours? The, down, the, the, downward. Downward. Yeah, okay. I would so say. Downward, so downward. You're the only Pretty Hate Machine. Um, pretty Hate no, Machine. No, but I mean, I love. Machine. But, but like, for me, yours was Downward said, as well. Yeah, yeah. yeah Downward. Yeah, dude, that, that album's downward. awesome, dude. But he's kind of cheating. I mean, the the reason why a lot why I think Downward Spiral wins is because 1989 versus 1994, mm-hmm. the technology was leaps and bounds better. He was on his My First Casio on fucking Pretty Hate Machine. Yeah. And that's part of my problem with this. It all kind of sounds like the same. Generic. What was, like, what was it? Yeah. It was like, do you have a Monarch or something he was using? A Move Monarch or something like that? I believe oh, he was using it. Never mind. Yeah. yeah. But it's all the so, same programming where like he had way more toys to play with by the time Downward Spiral came out. Fun fact. And it's a way heavier album too. (laughs) Fun fact, by the way, my cousin teaches his kids drums. So really, (laughs) which one of his eight daughters? Uh, He's, I couldn't tell you. I just know that he does. He's, he's, Grown close with the Resners because of it, which is pretty cool. So, if anyone could, Rob, play the gives, drum Rob beat, gives me shit about it all the time. He's like, the So, time. what? <laughs> right? Like, <laughs> no, he tells me this after we've recorded our cover. And he's like, <laughs> Oh, yeah, my cousin. I'm like, You fucking kidding me right now? Like, <clears throat> I just did this shit. I didn't think it was going to reach him. Like I like your guys' way. cover way better than Static X's, by the way. Thank you. You know what's funny about I that? Think, is I feel that our cover suffered from the fact that the Static X one came out like two weeks later. And yeah. I was like, oh, I, we, had, we, we had, had you guys know. We, we, we did, did not know. know. I didn't know yeah, anything about we that. Did it not was know, weird. But it was I appreciate like, that. Thank all of a sudden, you. there was this other version of it. Yeah. We were like, Static X? What the heck? Yeah. 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 Um, I, I had a question for you as far as what what do you think of the current day mod, uh, like model of people releasing singles over an album. Like there, there's the whole, it's like people are just trying to say like releasing an album is dead. Do you think we're I doing it, it the right way? No. I, okay, no. Or, no, I mean, I, I'm, I'm old school. I like vanilla. You like, you like We've been debating albums album. all evening here. Right. I love an album. I want to go on a journey with a band. Mm. But I get it. Like it's a different 
world nowadays. So I like, understand trying different things and doing different routes and a single every six weeks or whatever. I get it. Yeah, Personally, you, I want an album. So I want to go on a ride. So for us, what we're trying to do, like we thought, okay, nobody knows who the hell we are, right? Because we're just getting started. Let's release some singles for a year so that people can get into people's faces continuously for 12 months type deal thing. That's what the age of social media and the, uh, as we were talking about outside, what have you done for me lately? You know what mm-hmm. I mean? Uh, we felt like that was the best way to go. It's helped us tremendously grow on like TikTok and Instagram and everything like that. We've, we've gained a fan base without touching a stage yet, mm-hmm. which is pretty awesome. But I do we also. I do. Anyone. I, I just did. wanted to make that clear that I did not. He didn't say diddle. I, didn't, I, didn't, I just want to make sure that we are clear. I mean, Danny Masterson. Like, uh, yeah, we just had that whole conversation just last clear, episode. Like, uh, we're, so, we're diddle free I ain't around touching here. Anyone. But, but the end game here is to wrap everything that we've released into an album, along with like maybe three singles that haven't been released yet on that album. Mm-hmm. Um, I think that's the way to do it. I, these I, days. Like. Uh, I don't know. I guess your thoughts on that, dude. Like, you know, the, like you said, you, you, you appreciate the album. You appreciate the ride. I'm old school. I want an album. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. I want that voyage. Yeah. You know? It's it's cool to see. Like, I think like the, the art of a, releasing an album is just, it's something that's really, it's really cool. Cause you get to see like the band chose this order for a reason, mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Especially if it's not a con- especially if it's not a concept album, they're trying to give you a roller coaster of emotion through this album, the ups and the downs, and everything like that. So, yeah, it's really cool. Well, I, I get the releasing the album part, but it's also really hard, especially for like a new band like us, like you know, trying to just get out there. That's why I felt like doing the singles first was the mm-hmm. best way to do it. You know sure. what I mean? Well, yeah. you got to do it in a way you're kind of gonna get like the most bang out of it you know For sure. because yeah. i mean i don't know what the right answer is i mean it, right. yeah yeah, no, yeah. There is, there, there, and, right. and there is no right answer yeah, right yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's, well everybody's gonna it, well, right but, now everybody's just trying shit yeah that's but not it, already I think you what know saying is like you gotta tell a story with your album and mm-hmm. and if that album just comes out it's just eh, 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 eh. here's the thing that i'll say no matter what you do and we've talked about other bands and stuff I think you just have to be concise and brief and to the point with your message, whatever it is. Okay. Yeah. For sure. Yeah. Absolutely. More of that. Yeah. Don't touch fucking children. <laughs> <laughs> just don't yeah. fucking no touch diddly. children. No don't diddly. Be racist. Uh, yeah. Right? Like, come on. So, Mike, you've, can, you've asked me for since, like, day one of this bed, honestly. Like, hey, man, let me know when you're going to play a show. Let me know so, you know. I could be there slash I could promote it, whatever it is. You, you've constantly asked. I just want to let you know that that day is coming and it's November 25th. And I'm we, busy we, that day. Yeah. No, I'm just kidding. I, don't <laughs> I won't, I won't be like, there. He's like, hey, by the right way, now. I can't go. You totally are. You totally I'm are. I'm watching Metallica that night. <laughs> <laughs> but Metallica yeah, no, dude. Please, please I just, yeah, No, but, but where, when, where? Uh, we're, playing at, we're playing at Goodfellas in Rancho Cucamonga. We're playing with the Sumo oh, We Survive. Sh- old school. Yeah. yeah. So. Yeah. That uh, old school, way yeah. old school. Yeah, that uh, it's a great first place to do our first show for being that. Is that like Thanksgiving weekend though? Yeah, it is. It's Black it's Saturday. A Saturday after Thanksgiving. He was like, right, remind me when we eat off. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'm write that down. Yeah, yeah. but I it, got a lot of deals to catch. But yeah. whether, but whether or not you can make that show, Mike, the point the 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 point is is like we're finally gonna yeah, be doing it. You know what I mean? Like. And we're so excited to finally touch a stage. We've been working on the set. Uh, it's just going to be awesome, man. And we'll have more information as the time comes. But stuff like, you know, I just thought it was cool because you've, you've always asked. You're like, hey, man, let me know when you're going to play. Let me know when you're going to. And, and it always comes across as, uh, you know, sincere and genuine. And I appreciate the fact that you can't wait to see us play. You yeah. Know? I, so, can't yeah. I mean, like, I like the songs you send me. So I want to hear them live because, yeah. like we talked about, it's just kind of, what we're all talking about is really just a lifestyle. Yeah, definitely. And part of that is the live experience. Absolutely. Yeah. 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 I'm I'm very <laughs> try not to get emotional right now. <laughs> I'm at an age where I get emotional about weird shit. So if here he we cries, go. I'll slap him. <laughs> For sure. <laughs> if he cries, he's gonna slap me. No, Back but like, <laughs> you know, I've been I've been doing this since 2009 with previous projects and stuff like that. And I feel that we are <laughs> we are at I'm at a place in my life where like, this is the best product that I've ever put out 
in front of anybody. And I can't wait to show that to, to you know, can't wait to show that to Goodfellas. We make slash sure he the puts world, out the best you know? product before we even put it out. <laughs> yeah. Rob's like, that was good and I'd do it better, you know? So, yeah. <laughs> like, but no, hear but, what we reject. <laughs> we're all, you know, no, I'm just kidding. We're not all, you know, we're not all in our fucking 20s here. We're, right. we're veterans of the game. We've been doing this for many years with other different projects and stuff like that. So, yes, it's technically our first show with this band, but this is a combination of years worth of experience a of all of us. A cul- there you go. A culmination. Thank you. I'm a little high. Sorry. Fucking. <laughs> but like, what did you say? <laughs> But it's a culmination of just it's a combination. It's of, of years of experience of you know all of our backgrounds of what we've done and you know everybody's been on tour in this band. I think other than me, the one time I had the chance to do it, COVID hit. <laughs> so yeah, it's one of those things where I'm just really excited to to let everybody sure see what we've been tour. doing. Oh yeah, it was, it was a fun tour. Skype. Yeah. <laughs> That's my that's my roulette. It's one of these local bands that I play is gonna fucking hit it big, and they're gonna take me on tour with them. We got you, you go. Mike. Because that that that's my dream is I want to go on tour one day. Like you know, and do what? Sell merch? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just to set up merch. Your job: is set up, sell merch, <laughs> come back. And then I can do a hell of a stage intro too. Hell yeah, dude. he's like he's like that's what I'm going for right there. Well, well we got, I'll say this: we got our tour should roadie, you be available, merch guy? Should you be available November 25th? You are more than welcome to welcome us on stage. We would love that. Oh my god! So, yeah. The last time I was on a good good fella stage. Old school. Yeah, let's go right. with it. Oh. Go I want to hear this story. I, <laughs> I want to hear this I story. Too, I was there. Probably. Uh, yeah, you're probably the only one old enough to remember the band Hollow. <laughs> uh huh. He's old. Yeah. N- no. Are you kidding me? Hollow. That was like our local tool. Yeah. 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 If you knew Hollow, yep. oh my god. Yep. Uh, and yep. Josh. Oh, yep. Josh. Yep. Oh. Yeah, all the boys, all the yeah. boys. Yeah. yeah, those are my boys. That's the band I used to manage back in a million years. Yeah, ago. yeah, you did. So then, as you know, like, you know, the history of Goodfellas, is, as you're saying right now, that's the reason why we. It's going to be our first place there because we've all we've graced the stage there many a time. So a lot of people know like us there. Rockefellers, isn't that the thing out here? No, that's uh, not. Oh. Is oh, it really? Uh, no, isn't there one right here? What? Further uh, south? On the, yeah, further south. Uh, I think there's uh, one. I'm not sure. I don't know. Maybe they moved. I don't know. There's one. There here. was. I don't know. But yeah, but no, but like we have a lot of history at Goodfellas. We, okay. At our previous bands, we used to play there all the time and stuff like that. Just the general crowd there knows us all. So it makes sense to play somewhere where we can get the max amount of people that would know us to be there. You know what I mean? So like. I'm glad I have an excuse to go back there now. Yeah, <laughs> for sure. Yeah. Because yeah. it have been. Years. 20 a year. <laughs> yeah. But they don't put the stage up anymore. Like, oh, know. no. You got to uh, put it in the ground, too? No, 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 no. They'll put it up for bands. Oh. But it was just like back in the day, like they. Oh, the they, stage used to always be there. Yeah, for that like karaoke and stuff. The stage would yeah. stay there for a couple of days, but now it's just like they don't even put it up for anyone anymore. Like, well, they don't do bands that often anymore, though. Yeah, once yeah. a year, I think. Yeah. Once a year. Really? Yeah, they stopped. They, they Dude, used to do it all the like time. That was like the spot forever. I yeah. mean, like one of the. Four or whatever it was, it, the big four. The big like four. You, you, you could book a show there, make money, turn around. Yeah, yeah, one of the big spots. So we're going back to one of the originals still out here before they sell off and become a copy shop. I remember one one time uh, Hollow was playing a show there, and I was working at the other radio station X one zero three nine, and I was coming from some other event. Cause I was a promotion instructor there. So I would do like all the events and all the marketing and the booths and the street team. And I was coming from some other event and they were playing that night and I pulled up and they used to have a big uh, billboard truck. It was literally a, a, a billboard, a driving around billboard and pulled it into that parking lot and then it died. <laughs> And so I spent like the weekend <laughs> in the parking lot of yeah. Goodfellas. You just chill there. It's a hollow. Yeah. What are you guys promoting? Uh, this is Ben Hollow. Yeah. yeah. It was like Sunday at like 12 p.m. <laughs> it's still there, you know? Still there all week long. I remember that. <laughs> yeah. Danny, you got any more questions for Mike here? Um, sure. Uh, so what do you think... Uh, 
where do you think we're going as far as music? I mean, is I, I've been hearing a little bit lately how metal music is like one of the fastest growing genres right now. Mm. Um, what do you what do you think about that? How do you feel about that? I mean, as far as how does it feel to you as a radio DJ, and how do you feel like the, like the bands and the opportunities that'll present? I mean, for you and bands, and if that if that really takes on. I mean, I hope. I always want metal <laughs> right. to succeed. I was reading that, and I was like, let's go. <laughs> My concern is that everyone kind of sounds the same. Yeah. yeah. I feel like everyone's starting to sound the same. That's my biggest problem. Right. That I, I can see that, yeah. I feel it's, like it's, it feels, it's everywhere. It's starting to feel formulaic. A lot of things are, a lot of cookie cutter stuff is all over Giving the place. Giving metalcore a bad name. Movies, everything. Not to, yeah. not to fucking pat ourselves on the back or anything like that, but what's really cool is a lot of people tend to tell us, I really like you guys because you're different. So I think that that's cool that people think that of us, you know? That's, that's but a I think cool that thing. you, I mean, you always have to aim to be different. But yeah, I just, I see that, you know, and I think that I don't, I don't see where people don't really grasp that and go, hey, I, I really need to work on being pretty original, you know? Yeah, like, I mean, it's I a think catch. everybody's too, a lot of, everybody's just, we got to get it out and go and go and go, you know? Yeah, it's a double-edged sword. I mean, it's like on one hand, it's working, so stick with the formula. And then on the other hand, like I'm craving something different. Right. Yeah, that's hard as an artist, dude, because you always want to try something different. And then you have the fans that are like, oh, I liked it better when they were doing this. Or, you know, I don't like their new stuff. Or I'd prefer their old stuff. Or, oh, I really like their new stuff. I like that they evolve. That's difficult as an artist to to run that line of being... No, it isn't. Do what you do. Yeah, you but love, in the man. long run, we're going to do whatever the fuck we want to do. Yeah, you're right. Like, yeah. no one's buying Metallica, like, hey, let's see what new shit they did. Like, <laughs> no, they've already done that. Like, you got that out. Like, yeah. you want to hear Metallica do Metallica now be what it is. You want to hear, like, Pantera got back together. Okay, what do they sound like now? And I want to hear that. You, you want to hear what they're doing now but play the hits yeah play the, play the hits and on that note what's your favorite last days of war song control oh yeah. hmm. it's a fun one nice. we're gonna cut it before you even say anything yeah. so it doesn't the, the, no, <laughs> on the podcast no, on the podcast that was that was the, wow. jo the joke would be what's your favorite last days of war uh and then it cuts <laughs> so, uh, so for sure screwed that up haven't yeah. none of them <laughs> um no, but I do. I know that that was that's the way you wanted to end it. But I want to ask you one more question, Mike, and that that's is the way. I'm fine. how do you how do you respond to people who who have this narrative that radio is dead? Because I go to cake when I went to that caker, there's a lot of fucking people there that don't think radio is dead. Right. So what is what is the other side of of that on your end? I mean, yeah, the Kager is a great example of like radio still exists and it's still important, especially in the Inland Empire. Like there's still an audience, there's still a community. Like that's really what we've been talking about all night is community. Definitely. And this lifestyle and this life we've all chosen into. It's a bunch of misfits hanging yeah. out. Yeah. But that, I mean, that's, that's really what it is. And that's one of the things that I think KCAL still represents that a lot of other radio stations don't or are scared to or whatever. Like they're like, yes, we have a K or yes, we have cover bands. Like come hang out in our parking lot. Like it doesn't like, we're not trying to be anything other than we are. Yeah. And we're still local and independently owned. And we're not owned by some big conglomerate or, you know, clear channel or anything like that. Like still mom and pop owned and ran and like still like that, like heartbeat of America, which is the Inland Empire. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I'll uh, say that when I tell people, hey, I'm in a band, they're always like, oh, that's cool. And I say, yeah, you know, we've been getting played on 96.7. Oh, shit. Then they want to hear us. You know what I mean? So for, so for people to say radio is dead, the second I mention yeah, right. to them that we get played on the radio, then they want to be like, oh, well, let me check you guys out if you're getting played on the radio. You, you know what I mean? So It's great to hear that that's still a... That it's it's still, definitely a thing, dude. still carries some weight. It definitely carries some weight. Uh, you were just saying the other day, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, anytime I say that, it's all of a sudden, it's like, oh, wait, you know, like, oh, you got my attention yeah. now. Like, okay, you're 
I hear you. That's what was cool about uh, Randy, who I met from through the Oculus. Through the Oculus, when I was talking to him at the Kager the other day, he was like, "Dude, after you played us, like so many people like started hitting us up, like, oh, I heard you on the radio, I added you on Spotify, or this and that." Like, yeah, we get that too. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, absolutely, one hundred percent, Mike. Thank you so much for being on. Thank you for everything you do for the last days of war, for the independent scene in general. Uh, it's been great having you on, and we're glad to call you a friend. Thanks a lot. My pleasure, dude. Thanks for having me on. All right. Good times. Later. Cheers.